911 operator, what's your emergency? Hi, uh, I want to report a disturbance in front of my house. There's a group of hooded men standing outside of my lawn. Where is your house located? My address is... What is your name? My name is Nicole Summers. Okay, do not approach them. Law enforcement will be there shortly. There is a topic that is not often, if at all, brought up when talking about the Whiskey Fire the most devastating and unpredictable wildfire this country has ever seen. The topic of what most locals are calling the shadow men. Fire officials have never officially commented on what sparked the fire, with the generic answer being it started at the base of Whiskey Peak. However, there is evidence that someone or something may have started the fire. Between 911 calls, testimonials, and eyewitnesses, there was something strange happening around the city of Reading. I couldn't make out the words, but I could tell they were talking. They always seemed to move to another spot when you weren't looking. I really wanted to go out and ask them what they were doing near my house at that the hour, but I felt compelled to stay inside. Maybe I was scared. I don't know. City officials have refused to comment on these shadow men, calling it silly and unquestionably ridiculous. With everyone that I spoke with, one person in particular really stood out to me. Nicole Summers, who is geographically closest to Whiskey Peak, gives a very vague yet detailed description of her encounter with the Shadow Men. I just remembered waking up one morning, about 3 a.m., just feeling restless and parched. I went to go get some water when I noticed some awkward shadows projecting against my living room blinds, like if someone was walking by. There's a street light across the street from me, so there's always a glow on the front of my house. Anyways, I leaned on the couch to peek through the blinds. That's when I saw them. Weeks leading up to the fire, there have been several witnesses to the shadow men, but none had any direct interaction with them. I felt like I was still in a daze, almost questioning whether I was awake or not. They looked like normal men with black hoodies on, but... Something about their body language and the lack of certain movements made it extremely unsettling. I went to my bedroom to grab my phone, but when I got back, they were gone. Reports from others say that while they never stayed in one spot for more than a minute or two, they had a tendency to disappear when you weren't looking. It seemed like as fast as they left, they reappeared, now standing more in my yard, facing my next-door neighbor's house. I still couldn't see their faces, and it was about this time I decided to call 911. When I saw they were gone, that's when things got bad. My phone made that beeping sound when a call was dropped. I looked down and I saw that my signal was completely gone. I didn't know what to do at this point, you know? I mean, I had my daughter in the house sleeping and no way to call 911. I was freaked out by this point, but I noticed a shadow on my window again. So I looked out, and those men were back. But this time, they were facing my house. They were looking right at me, as if they knew I was there. I felt my chest tighten. I started having trouble breathing. I don't own a gun. I don't even have a bat. I was terrified. It was at this point that we stopped the interview as Nicole became very emotional. Not long after, law enforcement did show up to her house, but found no evidence of anyone standing in her yard or even being in the area. To this day, years later, nobody has any idea who these shadow men were. During my research into these shadow men, I was contacted by a state firefighter about the disappearances of other firefighters. This person will remain anonymous. My findings to the missing firefighters, what state officials say on these disappearances, and how it could possibly be connected with the Shadow Men will debut tomorrow night right here on KRDE News Channel 8.
our national anthem.